Hey there YouTube, PD2Finger here with a unboxing video. This is the mystery box, deep web, dark web, mysterious mystery package, mystery satchel that I'm going to open up. So today is the 19th of December. I'm literally waiting on multiple packages. My wife has stuff coming for the holiday for Christmas. I have stuff coming and then there is this, which I've been waiting for this for a while, and it's a, it's a big day. It's a red letter day, waiting for this package. I've been checking the packagetracker.com and putting in track multiple tracking numbers, so I've kind of, it's confusing, you know, most of the stuff comes USPS, and then there's that UPS, which looks so similar, I can never keep that straight, and when I've got more than one thing coming, I tend to make up a text document with the tracking number and then a little bit of information. So today the UPS guy came first. I'm thinking here it is. And it was a small package that was addressed to my wife. It was a Christmas gift. And it's not the gift that I had wanted to come yesterday. Because yesterday was my wife's birthday, and her gift is late. And it looks like one of her Christmas gifts is going to be late, too. Which really, it's it's my fault, but yeah, that sucks. So I'm. this is the season of me using my security camera. I see the mail truck pull up. I live in a cul-de-sac, which is a street that ends with a uh, circular street, a roundy go with an island in the middle of it. And then off of that circle, there's various driveways going to different apartment areas where there'll be two apartment buildings that share a common parking lot. So when I see the United States Post Office little truck, the mail truck, parked on the street in with my security camera, I know that within an hour uh, they will be in the hall. I can hear that and then I can usually go out there and meet the male person. It's usually a woman. Uh, so I'll go out there and say something nice to them and then I won't have to grab my key. The lock's kind of sticky. So yeah, today the UPS guy came. I'm thinking, here's oh, my big package is coming. It wasn't the big package. Because this has been me checking every day, you know, waiting for this for, for a while. It's been, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. So then the mail comes, they're in the hall, and there's no knock on the door. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's not coming today. Well, that was because obviously the size of the package, the mail person delivered the mail and then pulled in. After they left, 10, 15 minutes later, I hear somebody, a vehicle idling in the driveway, and it was this. So without further ado, the mystery, excuse the noise, I'm going to move the microphone little bit. What do we got here? It says fragile, 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 fragile from Jimmy Photon. Addressed to me. So this is going to be good. This is a package from Pinkster, my friend and partner in crime, Jimmy Photon has sent me another package. <laughs> so let's see what we got today in our... I did an unboxing video earlier this year on a Sunday. I did one. And it was a real bummer of a video. I went back and watched it. It's awful. My dark web mystery box unboxing video. It was breakfast that I got. It was pancakes and syrup and bacon and a cup of coffee with cream and sugar in it. So I was basically just goofing on this style of video where people say that they spent $10,000 on a mystery box and then they open it on their YouTube channel. But first off, we have a massive bag of PCBs. I have 
I have no idea what we're in for here. He did mention that he was throwing some goodies in here for me. Lardacious Fat Monkey Balls. <laughs> This one has tape on it. Two eat your guitar wolf computer, wolf CPUs. That's a an eight knob fuzz. This is a dead end. This is a Leica fuzz. There's two Leica fuzzes. Wow. Dead end effects. It's a, a Russian... I'm not even sure what that is. I'm guessing it's a germanium. It's three transistor, but there's three DPDT switches. And it looks like Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five. Five transistors on the bottom with a transformer. There's a transformer on this. What, the, what that means is how you, a fuzz, you're only supposed to plug in to a single coil. This has that single coil load is built into it, so you can put this anywhere in your chain and it'll sound the same. They're like, oh, a fuzz pedal, you always have to have it at the beginning of your chain. This is not like that. You can run active pickups, which is really cool. I'm not sure what the, all those extra transistors are. Maybe it's a... Well, knowing Dino, the guy who designed this, Dino and his partner, there was another guy involved in this. Uh, uh, with Dino's reputation alone, it's probably a very complicated, really cool circuit. And then this is a Mr. Multi, which is a Korg. Mr. Multi, which I think it's a formant device, like a vowels. So it's a like a advanced Wawa pedal. So yeah, very cool stuff. PCBs in here at the top of the box. We have a, that's a familiar site, a Boss Pro SE50 that 12 volt 1 amp is open and it's got all of the hardware in it. So I might, I might have to, I might have to spend some monkey time that going. I have one of these. These were popular uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. This was a, it's a really good, uh, very quiet multi-effect unit that is more of a studio thing. It, it has some distortions in it, which I actually use those distortions. But it's a, it's a, just a cool multi-effect processor. And then here we go. A Roland VG88. And this is what I will plan to use. Plan to use this uh, for recording in January. Last year, last year, I had a package that I opened and that had a 
a VG8, which is the predecessor to this. And I, I recorded an album with that. It's on this channel. It's called Minor Technical Difficulties. And it's just the instrumental instrumental guitar music. So we got one looks like one more thing in here. And this is a it's a Kent Bow Wow Yoi Yoi. So this is an old, I think it's West German, or I don't even know what this case, it's like Hammerite finish on here, but it's really heavy. Yeah, this is an old, it's a, called a Bow Wow Yoi Yoi because it it does both uh, the yoi yoi is like a high fr higher frequency of a normal wah so this is like a bulletproof like a it's just built like a tank and it needs there's spider eggs in there or no it's supposed to be there but this needs to be rewired this needs to be rewired Yeah, it's Bow Wow Yoi Yoi. Kent is also Shaler, Schaller, you say. So this is like an, it's an ancient Wow Wow pedal that needs the bypass wiring redone. The original switch is missing and he had purchased, a, it's like a 4P DT switch that's installed in here it just needs to be wired up so I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to spend some time with that I could probably figure it out it's not gonna be easy but yeah so we've got the Fowler Bow Wow Yoi Yoi there is an old SE50 that more than likely is gonna need uh, some TLC to get that going again Probably some bad capacitors, bad caps in there. Then there is those PCBs, the Korg Mr. Multi, and the uh, the Leica Fuzz, and then the Lardacious Monkey Balls, I believe. So I've got my work cut out for me as far as diving into some new projects here but the main the main event for me is this unit will be uh, programming going through this programming it uh, figuring out uh, everything it can do and then filling it up with the sounds that I would like to use and then using this to record an album of uh, original instrumental guitar basic rock with it. So what's what's cool about this is I, I did this same process last year and I have oh, just five feet over that way is a small stack of um, there's an equalizer 
Let me go see what, it, what I know this is really rude for me to just leave the screen. But we have, there's an EQ, there's a quad gate, so it's a uh, noise gate with four channels. Then there is a firewire interface. It's an M audio firewire interface. There's a Alesis headphone amplifier and then two tube preamps, two mono tube preamps, just a little, um, I think they're ART. So how this, how it worked last time when I went to record, I have a powder blue Fernandez Strat that runs Diodario tens and that guitar has a sustainer system on it. Um, and it, it has the GK2 pickup. So, over here, this computer that I'm talking to and filming on is full of VSDI, which is um, virtual instrument. Uh, so, it's synthesizers. And I really tried to get some knockout ones, some really good ones, and I updated that recently. So I should have some really great synthesis sounds. And then I've got a few, I've got a few different um, uh, USB MIDI keyboard controllers. So I do, I have, I have that computer here there's another computer that was a like a dual core uh, it's got 16 gigs of RAM in it and I bought that recently it was at a Goodwill I bought it right before I was gonna do this project we found this computer at a Goodwill and it had everything in it but it was missing the hard drives and it was a good like a good motherboard with good chips you know like it's a what do they call that uh, Intel dual chip? It's not an AMD. It's the Intel dual chip. Um, and they're good for music, like for running a DAW. So that computer is over there. I plug that into a secondary monitor. And then I will run this under this computer. There's audio cables coming out of this computer that run over to that area. So we take those RCA cables and they go into the USB preamp, which goes to this EQ, which comes out, which goes into the uh, the interface. And the interface is, uh, it's not USB, it's FireWire. Okay. So it's an M audio two channel, and then I so I monitor out of that interface. That interface gives me my sound, so I can that is running down to a power amp over here. It's like a home stereo, and I got a pair of Sony monitor looking speakers set up, basically in that triangle sweet spot from where I'm sitting here. There's two speakers right up here, and then I got a pair of monitoring headphones that I use for most of it. I, basically, for tracking, I'm using the headphones. So what I do is I will sit down here, and I have a drum loop library in this computer. There's another computer here that I didn't mention, so and they both work on the same monitor, so I can assemble the drum loops. Um, so what I'll do is I will go through the loop folder, and I'll just start auditioning beats, and I'll hear a beat that I will play the beat, and in my head I will hear a guitar part. So I will assemble that beat and work with a this guitar that has a small amp system that this right here is a little mini amp with a multi-effect unit. The Zoom G10N is right here. So uh, 
I will have my computer monitor speakers, I have a really nice set of old Altec Lansings that are just stellar. So I will have the, that drum beat coming out of there, I'll turn this guitar on, fiddle around and play along with it and get that rhythm track completely built. So when that's built, it gets piped over via network to the computer that sits over there, the recording computer, and then I install that into the DAW for the first track. Um, then I do all the guitars, which is the that Fernandez Powder Blue guitar with the GK2 pickup. I didn't have any guitar, any real guitar in the mix until halfway through. I realized that I had never moved the switch from synth to synth and guitar, and then I started using a blend of a little guitar in there, but you, you, you can't tell. You can't tell. The tracking is so fast on this system that it, there's really no, no noticeable lag. So that GK2, that special pickup, goes in, into here, and then coming out uh, right in to the, this will sit over there on a TV tray when I'm recording, and uh, took me three weeks to do the whole album. So basically in the morning I'd sit here and put the, put the rhythm tracks together and pipe them over there, and then I would start in on the guitar tracks, typically a song would take me about a whole day to do all the guitars, including the bass. Um, so when I'm done with the guitar tracks, you unplug this cable, it's basically, I think it's uh, it's like, I was using a lot of RCA cables. I bought a bunch of bullet adapters, which are quarter inch to RCA, um, so I wasn't running full size cables. But I had some real beefy RCA cables, and, and long ones too, that are almost as thick as a regular guitar cable, they're like heavy duty gold or whatever, oxygen free cables that I get from Goodwill. So. Uh, pretty much how it worked was every time I would change instruments, I would just pop a set of cables that were usually RCA with those bullets on them, which is RCA female to quarter inch male plug. Unplug those out of the pair of ART2 preamps, and then I would plug in the cable from this computer. And I, I had a switch box for at, at the end of it. I had a box that you would hit a button and click, it would switch over, and it was an audio video switcher, and it had four different things to plug in where I was only using two. I'm sure you think, oh, you're going to lose signal with that. Well, are you? Really? I mean, I'm already, it's like it's not really that pure of a signal path. And I mean, listen to the album for yourself. If you think it sounds awful, let me know. But, uh, I used that box on about half of it, and then I found that it didn't take me much longer to just unplug the cable from the interface and plug it in. But uh, this computer here, like I, we alternate between uh, running this computer, the i7, into the interfaces because this was how I would do the electric bass guitar. I was using um, Amplitube and uh, guitar Rig, Guitar Rig 5 was what I was using, and there was another software uh, for just for the bass parts. So how that would work is there's a little Line 6 guitar port, and that's a little red box with one knob on it, and it has a USB and a quarter inch jack. Uh, and then there's RCA plugs on that. So that interface works with the ASIO driver and worked really well even for the synths, I believe that was what the RCA cables were connected to. So anytime I would want to use two six string guitars, it was the Roland DG8. This time I'm going to be using this 88, which is newer. It's got this pedal on it and I think there's There's more effects. It says Cosm, guitar, and amp. So I don't know. I've never I've never turned this on. There's a secondary expression pedal, and I have that stuff here. Guitar input. You can plug a regular guitar into this. You don't need to use the synth pickup, but I have the synth pickup, so. Uh, but that'll be nice in a pinch. So yeah. It's a real easy system. Like I said, it's just a pair of preamps going into an EQ. 
and I would use that EQ. I, I did use it. I like when I was doing bass, I would um, bump it up around 80, and you know, and then like for the drums, I would always put a little notch at 80. But uh, pretty much, I would finish with the guitars, and I would unplug these two cables or hit the switch, and that would switch over to this computer. And then there was a cable coming out which went to a tuner, and I would tune the bass. Uh, I think I was using the tuner on the VG8 to tune the guitar, and because um, that that guitar it's just like a strat with a with a um, six screw uh, vintage style Fender tremolo system, so. And I did use the trim here and there on that guitar, but it didn't. It's it's a six screw trim. I mean, you know, they're not great. It's not like it's not like it's a a Floyd with a locking nut, which is what I really love to use. And really, that's what I really love to use. Uh, the thing is, is I didn't want to put the GK2 pickup on that guitar because you're either using double sided tape or drilling holes in it, and I just I didn't want to do it. I did that on my strap when I bought my strap and, and the paint came off of it where the double sided tape was and it, it's really devalued the strap. So that was like one of those things where I was just like, you know, it's that's carried with me, it stuck with me. But what I was trying to get at today that I don't think that I ever got to was just how easy the process is of, I have to have a stool set up. Over there, there's a stool, and I'm looking at a monitor with the DAW, and then I have I have a controller. Oh, this is getting loud. I have this thing which is called a it's called a Contour Shuttle Pro, and it's like it's bigger than a mouse. It's like this thing that has a couple of wheels on it, scrub wheels. And then and it's covered in buttons, and that has a USB cable. And so you assign that thing. They're a hundred dollars for those. I got mine for fifteen because it was missing the knob, um, and then I put a different knob on it. And anyway, that thing runs on the computer that runs the DAW. So I sit down on the stool, tune up using the tuner that's in this digital guitar system, find a patch, play along with that with these headphones. That are hooked up to the headphone and I'm sitting on the rack. It's all it's all right within my touch. So really the only effects I have to worry about are all built into the VG system. Um, I didn't do any real processing at all. If I when I wanted to use effect, I would find a sound that had the effect on it already and use that. Didn't really use much effects. They're all built in, you know. And this thing, it sounds like a mastered album. That's why the album sounded so good, was because the tra every track that I laid down sounded really well. So I was just um, tracking to m like minus six with the peaks being just uh, above that, like with the music riding, the bulk of the music when you're looking at it at minus six and the peaks would be above that. And I was using the same compression algorithm for everything. I used ozone for mastering. So it was really a no-brainer process. I would sit down on the chair, tune it, find the patch that I wanted, play the track, do the tracking, and then uh, when I was done with the guitar, after say four hours of guitar, I would disconnect the guitar and go put that away and grab the uh, electric bass that has a preamp in it. And I would, that had a tuner like a real nice mono price, 6112, the best tuner your money could buy, and they're 20 bucks. It's a pedal tuner that's just super accurate and fast and very colorful and large display. Forget that pitch black, get the mono price $20 one. It takes a 9 volt battery too, and it has the bypass. There's two different jacks on it, so however you want to run it, where it's always through or to click bypass it. So, yeah, I would tune that bass, and then I would sit here, and I would load up uh, whatever program I wanted for the bass. Like, I tend to use 
a really super deep bass sound and then I will have a smaller cabinet bass sound and put a distortion on that put a fuzz on it and have an envelope filter and what you can do is like uh, double triple track that so you'll uh, a supreme bass track for me is where I alternate every other note when I play the bass track and I do that um, on the non effect of the regular super deep bass and pan those hard and then the other one that's in the middle the accents I play with that quacky with the uh, envelope filter with the distortion on it that's like a really cool uh, it takes a lot longer to record that but it, at that point you don't need a lot of guitar if you're starting the song from a bass perspective try that try that and you'll see a really minimize the amount of guitar work you have to do but yeah I would sit here and call up um, I can't remember the name of the software it wasn't uh, PD Revolver it wasn't guitar rig um, I remember it being orange so yeah it was a year ago and the only time I ever used that was just for it was for the affected bass tracks the distorted um, and I used some Line 6 stuff because I had the the uh, the interface came with software that worked so you didn't have to pirate anything and that had some really cool bass stuff in one of the root like the thing that came with it that was really ugly and it looked like Windows 98 stuff the bass stuff on there was awesome it was really good sounding stuff uh, the, especially the, the effects like I said the, the distortions the fuzz so uh, the in between you know like I said I would plug in a uh, MIDI USB and do the sound effect beds which I'm gonna do that this time but I'm gonna pay more attention because I started off doing a bunch of those beds at night I would do a bed and then I would just put it in and I didn't even know what key the song was and then about halfway through I started doing them let's say the song that ends is in A and then the next song is C so I would start in A and then it would kind of change into a C and then that would fade out and then the song would come in in C so I don't know I pre it, who, who knows what's going to happen I, there might I, I sang on the last song I sang there might be another vocal song it might all be vocals. I doubt it. My voice is really cached. But um, it's more than likely just going to be instrumental music. But I'm going to be doing the exact same approach. And I also think that not really knowing, not knowing uh, is really, I work, I work. It comes out different. When I, when I know what I'm going to do, when I have a plan, it turns into like a thing. So, um, yeah, digital. It's so unbelievably easy to do this. I mean, I compared to working in the garage in the studio, uh, my old partner, how we would do it, where we would have to set up everything manually and uh, make a mica cabinet. It just, just took incredibly long to get anything done. Where this, I can literally, I can do a song in one day, and nobody knows I'm doing it. The neighbors have, are clueless. My wife comes home from work, and I'm like crying. And it's because the line that I just wrote was so beautiful that it just blew me away. You no, know, that happened last year. A song called One After 119. I mean, it was also, we were losing... Our, our pet got cancer and we lost him. But um, this digital thing, like I said, I, I see people constantly knocking it and ripping on it and saying, too bad. <laughs> That's fine for you. But don't come and hate on me because I use digital. Okay, I figured out how to 
make this music that I make, and it sounds warm, it sounds good, it's not fake or digital sounding, um, so why are you going to get upset with me for doing that? I could care less what you're using. If you're using all tube, all analog stuff, that's great. But at the end of the day, I'm going to venture to say um, the efficiency level that I have going with the system where I'm the only setup that I'm doing is unplugging one cable from the interface. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that maybe that's why you're getting so bad out of shape, because you know that your way costs five grand and you have to maintain it and constantly be putting tubes in it and then doing all the setup work and you're limited to just a couple of, you know, tones, timbres, with the way that you do it. Um, and then if like me, you know, using a secondhand old piece of gear that was a super expensive thing that now really isn't worth much because of the market, but when you get down to it, it sounds like unbelievably good. So I think that's really why people get upset is because they feel frustrated, they get mad. But uh, you know, there's going to be a few days here of me going through this with headphones on, playing all of the patches, and then there's going to be time when I program it and I get rid of the stuff that I don't like and I put more stuff that is usable in there. Uh, so it's not just like, you know, for me it's more like there's a lot of small things that happen before I go to, I get to that date where it's, I'm ready to actually lay a track down. And the more of that preparation work that I do, it's time consuming, the less time that happens when I'm actually laying down the tracks. So, um, I think that people are going to get really upset and shake their fists and, you know, make nasty comments online because they weren't able to do that. They bought a Line 6 Spider and put pedals in front of it, which you can't do. You know, they, certain people just don't kind of get how this stuff is supposed to work. You know, they'll buy a multi-effector that has amp and cab sims in it and play it through their amp. <laughs> say it sounded like shit. Well, you can't play it through your amp. You need to play it through a power amp with a full range speaker, which that means that we'll have two, you know, a woofer and a tweeter, or three, a woofer, a mid-range driver and a tweeter with a crossover and then it'll sound like it's supposed to sound which is sounding like a mastered album it's not supposed to sound like an amp in a room so it's apples and oranges I mean and I me personally I've been able to kind of do that live I play uh, outdoors and get a good sound using this imaginary equipment, the stuff that runs off of AA batteries. <laughs> so, don't, don't hate me because I found a way to beat the system. Hate me because I'm dumb and ugly. There's plenty of real good reasons to knock on me. But anyway, guys, this video's been way too long. I really doubt anyone has made it this far if you have. Peace. Good luck and have uh, wonderful holidays. Check out my Christmas video that I did. Some good advice for you, especially if you're a musician. Anyway, peace and happy holidays to you and your loved ones.